Hi guys, this is Tarun. Today we are going to see about design and simulation of high frequency patch antenna for wireless communication. This is designed by Tarun Mudam Dinesh and Shaikh Nagur Miran and guided by Muni Reddy Yemi and from Well Tech High Tech Dr. Rangarajan and Shaikuntala Engineering College. And this is the window of an HFSS 13.0 tool and this is the 3d layout panel and the toolbar where we are design properties where we are able to design our antenna for required specific inputs and add field to provide an su base substrate and coil whatever parameters we need in name toolbar we have to provide necessary name for each and every element in a particular field In first we have given a substrate for base substrate we are providing a name as a substrate and adding an another tool in the base of the substrate SL which indicates the substrate length it's a 40 mm And we are adding another one SW is a substrate with it's again 40 mm 14 to 40 substrate thickness which indicates the thickness of the substrate is 1 mm now we are adding a this um, parameters of the coil It separates from the substrate square coil it's a case sensitive we should not provide any space in between the wordings Now we are providing a coil coil length it's thirty four mm sorry it's thirty one mm And we are adding another one coil with thirty four mm. UD, which indicates an space between them each square coil uh, that we are using it is 1 mm it's coil thickness zero point five uh, mm these are the required necessary design parameters used to create an uh, patch antenna and now we are going to design and by clicking that icon we can able to 3 the 3d view of each and every parameters x y and z axis in which angle we can able to drag and drop it's easy, easy to interface that and uh, x y z y z x these are the interface where we can able to create our add a new element uh, with necessary period it's an uh, icon we are going to create a rectangular substrate this is a process to add it and by clicking on the drop down disk in the left turn panel in the attributes we can able to change that name as a substrate 
the material necessary material we have to edit fr4 epoxy substrate we can able to change the color color to differentiate between the each and every element it's from uh, transparency which indicates a transparency view it's not in very important now access by using this dialog box we can able to arrange in required position position x and y z three axis position by by giving that necessary elements we can able to get to the required position We have to give the necessary position to arrange on the required position. For that, okay. Now we can able to see on which axis has been placed. It's on ZX axis. You can able to see that it's perpendicular to the Y axis. Now we are going to create an six squares. First, we are using the rectangular strip on the antenna substrate base, and same process has continued with and giving the necessary name and the attribute box coil. We can able what what remember name we can able to give in that. And now position. By using the coil size, width, length, and we can able. In this, we are using a duplicate ac around axis. It is it is used in. It can be in toolbar. By clicking that, we can get the opposite same duplicate axis. Now we have to give the same parameter for duplicate axis. It's exact opposite to the original one by changing the signs and necessary elements. We can give whatever whatever position by using the we can able to adjust the and trial and error method. In that first we have to calculate what position it has been arised and what position we have to change so that it will do whatever necessary position. Now we you can able to see that it had a particular state opposite to each other. Now we are dragging an another square rectangular patch, a copper patch. Same process is continued. If you need an if you need an uh, previous parameter, you can able to copy and paste in the required parameter length. It's easy to do. We have to change then pre-ordered parameters in that position to change change into required one. Now we are adjusting the parameters to get placed in required position. HFSS tool can is is easily designed and provide a three dimensional view. Now you can able to see the rectangular strip just downwards of the previous one. Now we have two sm smaller sized in the z axis, so we are now adjusting that. We need a right side position, but it came downwards. See. It came left foot. Little bit over the previous one, so we are adjusting that. Mm. 
we got a particular accurate position now we are going to duplicate same process as you click a duplicate I around axis and 180 degree shift same process I can do and we got a square shaped first square shape we need a six square shaped antenna so same process is continued to get six square shape and we click the unite and icon so it will be united in same square plan. by clicking another step by placing on a required position which is and now the process is skipped and we got a six square process antenna you can able to see that and you have to unite by clicking four icons and inverted icon on the top of the toolbar by using the tool you can able to see is there any position or left out or everything has been joined perfectly if any perf any joints has been left out there is a no process of energy in that signals can't able to pass on that now we are going to subtract that required position to ma to join as a diagonal we are going to design a square squ spiral so we, we need to subtract uh, some position in that square spiral antenna now we are providing a necessary name to it I'm providing a position it may be anywhere in that antenna now you can able to see that it has been skipped to somewhere position and by providing the right antenna it has been subtracted perfectly now by using a line icon and click a subtract icon it will get erased perfectly now we are going to join diagonally by using a line icon in a toolbar you can able to see that it has been cut perfectly or indirectly we need a perfect cut over that position if you try a rectangular you can't able to connect a thread diagonally it can connect only as a parallel or a straight line it's not our necessary goal to have that so we are not going to use that whatever you provided a parameter supposition it won't change as a diagonally so we are now using a line icon this had been in a toolbar we have to connect diagonally mm. the draw line is an icon where we are going to use now We are going to connect a last one to the uh, required diagonal position and we are drawing a four lines to connect on that. You can now be able to see that four lines it has been perfectly diagonally connected over that. now I'm gonna change the required position to make all that of connected diagonally by giving the necessary elements we have to cal pre-calculate that every position we need See that now the point two has been connected. Now we are going to change point three.
can able to see that are perfectly connected same process has been continued for remaining strip and now the you can't able to see the spiral antenna by connecting diagonally as over that now we have to need a feeding path to the diagonal patch antenna now we are creating a rectangular same process to the feeding point you can able to see that now we are going to change that re uh, required height length and thickness and we can able to give necessary name to that line 1 and we are now changing its attributes commands position whatever it may be now we are going to change its position We can we can now use that call co co call thickness length with by that we have to use we need we have predetermined that values so we can able to use that vari variables now we are providing that necessary z axis length now we got that. Now same process of two feeding point right one for positive and then negative it may be so we are creating another one if you need to enter an additional design properties <coughs> you can able to enter in that panel or you may change that on the panel now we are going to change that channel length see it has been changed there we have to connect the inner core of that spiral to the outer core so we need a same distance over there so we are adding an additional additional rectangular strip over that path Now we are changing the x axis positions in order to make a correct position after that yeah we got at same at same x axis length you can able to see that now we have to connect inner one to the outer one now we are using a jumper jumper over that six pi parallel antennas to connect inner one to the outer one while we are using a rectangular shape it gonna short all the fire to the inner one to the outer one so now the we are using a red jumper to over that jumper rectangular icon you can able to see on the toolbar you may copy the previous records now i have to see that there is a little bit variation over to connect that so we have little bit adjust yeah now we are using a jumper click on that and drag out uh, drag up uh, mm. you can get on that you may adjust the rectangular path over that by providing necessary position elements still you can able to see that there is a little bit of cap over that so you need to adjust over so get a perfectly oriented inner to outer one you need to calculation math over that to be adjust over that now you can able to see that it is perfectly joined over that inner one to outer one without shorting anything now you need to join the jumper you have to place the 
signal passing element over the jumper so you need a parameters of the jumper to place on that you can able to edit that water parameters you need that epoxy 4 subset we are using a jumper because we have used this as a subset as the same material and as a jumper as the same material it won't cost anymore it costs very less so that we have used that one material compared to the remaining materials yeah by giving an any other color it may differ that copper strip and then uh, jump over that opq transparency it may be whatever element you can able to give on that now quickly click in on that data yeah you can able to see the jumper it's different from the rectangular strip now you're going to attach a rectangular copper strip over the jumper now we have to provide a necessary position on the z axis y axis in order to place on the top of the jumper we are aligning the positions you need to do math over math in your home it's take lot of work if you need a box parameters you can able to see whenever you need one can able to copy that It's a predetermined values you can have to change you have to change that you know to place on the required position yeah have a look have a look at that it's perfectly placed over the jumper by using that icon you have to you have can able to see that perfectly on an x z axis and over the jumper without any deviation on that now we are need two more strips in order to couple that with a rectangular strip on the sides of the jumper now i am zooming in you can able to see that there is a path left between the inner core and then step bit above the jumper you can change the axis so place on right oriented as a side you need a y and z axis make as a comfortable value you have to place now you have to draw that take the rectangular strip and draw over that yeah it's perfectly arranged if any deviation take sides of the jumper and as position to the new rectangular strip by hand icon you can able to drag that uh, zooming in and zooming out now you can able to perfectly see that I how I place the inner core to the jumper over that now I am going to unite that three elements into the single element by clicking that unite icon it's a previously united yeah now you have to see that three elements are united perfectly These are the jumper sides, polyline, 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 one and two and three and four. 
uh, these are the sites and if you need that parameters you can able to copy that and use in a pre future process now I'm gonna change that perfectly oriented now you wanna attach an another rectangle strip over that side of the feeding element it's right it's perfectly oriented if you need to see z zoom in and see what our position it has been aligned just click unite icon and the three elements is a single element just click on that right and, and search, search unite icon mm -hmm. now you can able to see that both three elements are jointed as a single one to pass the signal over that now we need to attach another one in here Please make sure of that 3D pattern is perfectly arranged over here. Just drag it. Yeah. That's the spot where you have to head on and attach that. Now you can able to see it clearly. Just drag it. That's it. It's perfectly arranged. Click Unite icon. Unity. It's Unity, right? Unity. So whatever, maybe just click on all that. So I'm passing over that. Just verifying what I need. We have to do that. And a scale over that you can able to see that millimeter or red cut curriculum we have to adjust little bit position over that you can make use of it's a pre-aligned element we have to going to change the thickness of the coil and the width of the coil that's it copying the position of that previous thing now you can able to sing it's a game little bit over the jumper I mean side over the jumper now providing another intention another parameters oh my god it's, it's blurred out it's came under that right yeah it's came under that we need just right above the jumper so we have to make a calculation over that I'm clear that yeah it's oriented perfectly oriented scheme yeah you can able to see that just click three icons right and click unite unt unt correct uh, yes that's it unt that's it and we are get a spare lantern out yeah you can able to see the path of the signal from inner to the outer I mean the feeding element 
incoming feeding element to the outer coming feeding element by dragging it you can able to see that perfectly one space or that on the scale it gonna adjust whenever we are zooming in and out based on our adjustment the scale gonna adjust we can able now we are going to design a feeding element the feeding element yeah you can able to see that we are just the feeding feeding element Click OK on that. You got it. But it's not aligned properly. You have to adjust to get a required position. Yeah, it's properly adjust. I think there is a little bit over the top. By clicking that you can able to differentiate from that origin. Now we are using a lumped port. We have to put that right positive and negative source, source to the element. And we have to give the type of line over that. You can be able to see the differentiation line being that source is just indicate that inner one and outer one it may be a positive or negative. It's just both. And it's perfectly oriented over that. That's it. You can able to see and drag that and record position whatever it may be in there. Now we are going to design a ground plane, a perfect ground plane. Just drag it to the record position. Just give necessary position elements. It's too boring, but it's it been very adventurous when you're gonna ride on that. You can able to see that it's got perpendicular perpendicular oriented, but we need a parallel one. Just change a little bit, it's a small icon over that. Yeah, small thing can get a big change that's it it's parallel oriented but did a bit gap over that that's it we have to just stick over that on the base of that element ground plane over that yeah 
you can able to change as a ground plane it's a square coil indicates that as this has been square just given black color or red it may be whatever it may be you can able to give that Just in a square color, we have changed color. That's it. Not anything else. Just change it, whatever name you have to give. <laughs> it's not necessarily the same name. I have to give that there. Give whatever name or dot be. That's it's a back side of the gap. Yeah, yeah, it's a front side. That's it. Now we are going to design a radiation box to place an uh, antenna inside that. It's a just a radiation box. With filled with a g R. Just need to rename as a radiation box. Just type it as an R. Just click OK. Transparency, whatever it may be. You can give a higher transparency. Properties change whatever name you need, it will get added on that. Mm. You can see the full fledged and finished product. setting the radiation pattern frequency I mean frequency to the every each and every box Analysis done. Mm. Now you can able to set what or frequency you need for the antenna. I'm gonna give a 30 megahertz frequency. Set up and it's a frequency thirteen point five six. You're gonna be able to change my hertz or gigahertz, terahertz, kilohertz, whatever it may be. Number of passes I'm giving a sixteen now. Number passes. Click OK. That's it. 
heads wrongly mentioned my heads it's a gay heads but i don't know <laughs> frequency set up it's a line set up starting and ending frequency 11 to 15 that i didn't between us so it would won't be a problem and counts thousand which can get set thousand tones it's okay in a field line it's problem is a line problems just is a mandatory process or is a not a mandatory is option optional one near field far field line sphere yes now i want to check out that list yeah it's everyone going to take that we have happy pro- as we happy process as a successful and designed if you got an cross mark over anyone it's your process has been failed no analysis has been stored it got process 30 20 sorry 20 passes you can able to see the asterisk six is going to pass the same asterisk 20 passes will be going on after that your result will be there after passing the 20 analysis check out the result over there in the result tab by clicking on that you can able to see the result check 3d directivity it's a gain x axis gain now to get an vhwr click on that so vhwr source and db change it to the gb and address 